Let's pay homage to the lineage gurus, homage to the venerable Mang Liaoming, homage to Master Sakya Tung Kong, homage to His Holiness the Sixteenth Kamapa, and homage to Master Dupton Dorji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar. Homage to the main deity of Homa today. The great sun, Tathagata. The all radiant Vajra. Sumo, Tansankato, Tutan City, Tutan Kama. All Dhamma masters. Dharma lecturers, Dharma teachers, Dharma instructors, Dharma tutors, temple and center directors, and all disciples present here and over the internet. Good afternoon, how do you do? ほら、would like to announce for next Sunday, November 26th at 3 p.m. There would be Viscambian Homa Fire Offering Ceremony. And Viscambian is one of the eight great Bodhisattvas. Mantra and his mudra, the uh, the ring fingers and the thumb touch the ring fingers. So the pinkies and the ring fingers are inside the palms. And the thumbs are touching the ring fingers. So this is the mudra. This Kambin Bodhisattva is rarely performed. Eight great Bodhisattvas. As I know, in the Garbhadhatu and Vajradhatu, there is a Viscambian court, and the main deity is Viscambian Bodhisattva, one of the eight great Bodhisattva. Just now, at my room in the Rainbow Temple, when Simu came to my room to 
to call on me. It's three already. And I said, please tell everybody that everybody should just uh, uh, take care of themselves. Because I'm very tired. I feel very, very, very tired. And Sumo said, how can it be? Uh, but uh, there must be someone that will uh, take care of it on my behalf. We have the Tubida Foundation and the abbot of the Seattle Temple, the secretary, the accountant, and the abbot of the Rainbow Temple, and the manager. There are many f uh, figures. Everyone can do it. Uh, when they're outside, they do Homa too. So we can have them take care to take my place because I'm really too tired. So like they would uh, study by themselves like in class in the school, the teacher said now it's self-study time. In the future, if I cannot appear to preside over ceremonies anymore, then Sung should be first to appear. Where is Master Lian Sung? Uh, Master Lian Sung is also too tired. Then we'll see which one of the Seattle Temple or Rainbow Temple can all perform it. If these people are not available, uh, we also have Lotus, Lotus Light Temple and the Puti Temple, and also the visitor from Washington, D.C. They are all capable, or Lianning, or the Diamond Temple, or Master Piano can do it too, or Lian Wang. You can always have me carrying my old age. This old ox has lost his energy. It should be done by the young and strong oxen or cows to plow the field. And my voice has been hoarse for a few weeks now. Uh, that's the message between the lines. One day I would not be able to 
preside over ceremonies anymore and someone has to take over. It will happen one day. Like the great uh, Buddhist or the Dharma teachers, like the ambassador can do it too. There are many uh, talented people. Uh, my voice is hoarse and I need to sp still to speak and give Dharma teaching. You can just sing. No need to give Dharma teaching. Okay, that's good too. It's, I've lost my voice and you asked me to sing? The voice is really hoarse. <laughs> the weather in Seattle is very misty. It's dark at night and rainy and cold and dark. <laughs> And my heart, my heart is also cold. Uh, but the ceremony is uh, very bright. Just now, we performed the Homa of Mahavairokana Buddha, and this deity is the greatest patriarch of uh, Tantric Buddhism, Vairokana, the All Radiance Vajra. When I saw the primary supplicants, the number of primary supplicants, my heart uh, turned cold. It's such a great deity greater than Vajrasattva. If we, we can say that he's the father of Vajrasattva. Vajrasattva is just like his prince or son. The greatest uh, deity of the five Dhyani Buddhas. And the mudra that he formed is the mudra of five wisdoms. All five wisdoms are on his mud mudra. It's the wisdom, authoritative mudra. Both Garbhadhatu and Vajadhatu mandalas have Vairokana as the main deity. The Vajadhatu refers to the fruition, and the Garbhadhatu is the, the cause, cause and resultant. And in terms of wisdom, the Vajadhatu 
is the wisdom, and Karpadatu is the concept. Dharma realm. Because there is Karpadatu, therefore there is Vajradatu. Therefore, Vairokana Buddha or Maha Vairokana Buddha's mantra Om Petta Tattu Fan. Indonesians say Satu One, number one. Tattu is number one. The one with the foremost wisdom, that's Vajra Dattu. A -e -la -hom -khan. That represents the whole universe, the whole cosmos. Karpa Dattu Mandala, which are the five elements of the five wheel stupa. Earth, water, fire, wind, and space. The whole cosmos or universe is made of the earth, water, fire, wind, and space. And that represents the Karpadatu Mandala, Karpadatu realm, or the womb realm. Such a great deity. But the primary supplicants were very few. So people do not know. But uh, for wealth deities, many people register for primary supplicants. But for the greatest and highest deity, The greatest Mahavairukana, the All Radiance Vajra, <laughs> or maybe because he's too great, so they cannot reach him. There are only very few. There are two mudras. One is the Wisdom Authority Mudra, which belongs to Vajadatu, and the other one is the Dharma Realm Meditative Mudra. That's for Vairokana at the Karpadatu Mandala. So, Vairukana Buddha, Buddha Lukana, Padma Kumara, Maha Vairukana, Buddha Lukana, Amitabha, Padma Kumara, they are on one line. We often say Sakyamuni Buddha, his real Dharma Kaya is Vairukana, or Radiance Vajra. The founder of Buddhism and the Sambhogakaya is Buddha Lokana, and the Nirmanakaya is Sakyamuni Buddha. So, those are the three kayas or three bodies of the Dharmakaya, Sambhogakaya, and Nirmanakaya. Let me share a joke. A sick person on the sick bed in the hospital, and he told the nurse lady, I have no girlfriends and no friends either, and no money. And no house. Does it mean I have nothing? I really have nothing. And the nurse told him, 
But you should have some self-confidence. How come you have nothing? At least you have illness. <laughs> Vimalakirti uh, Sutra talks about the illnesses. Oh, the, it makes me sick too. Someone told God, how come other people's cars are better than mine? And all the girls on their cars are more beautiful than mine. Also, God, in the future life, please let me drive a big car carrying so many ladies. <laughs> and, it, and then he became a bus driver. <laughs> The driver for the big bus. Did you find my voice also hoarse? <laughs> That's a, a comforting price. In Indonesia, they are Lian Yang and Lian Qin. So, Si Lian Qin from Indonesia asked question, Most precious Guru Buddha Amitabha, I sincerely pray to the Guru Buddha that you would be well and healthy, remain in samsara to turn the Dhamma wheel and liberate sentient beings. I would like to ask Guru Buddha if a spiritual center invites a master to preside over a Dharma ceremony, but the main deity has a complex appearance such as having multiple heads, hands, or legs, such as thousand arms, thousand eyes, Avalokiteswara, Mahajundi, or Yamataka, etc. It might be difficult for me to clearly visualize the main deity in details. And trying to do so would take a very long time. And then it might still not be complete. Please advise how the presiding master should do. Thank you for your compassionate teaching. Your disciples, Lian Jin, bows in gratitude. I think I have spoken on this before. You want to visualize Yamantaka, you place the Yamantaka image on you and and look at look at it uh, frequently so that when you close your eyes then the image of Yamantaka appears automatically. If you want to visualize thousand arm, thousand eye have a look at this vara, as soon as you close your eyes then I will look at this vara will appear because you often look at their images the same with Yamantaka or Mahajuni. You don't need to visualize each of the Dharma implements, but the overall um, image or appearance can be imprinted in the sky. 
This is a method. If you really cannot visualize in details, then primarily just visualize the face in the middle. And if you cannot visualize the face in the middle, then just visualize the third eye. Just visualize the third eye because one represents many. And everything is also one. So first, in visualization, everything is one and one is everything. If you visualize one part in great details, and the key point is to visualize the mudra in great details, then that represents everything. Or you want to visualize everything clearly. Say Yamantaka and I can visualize many legs, many arms, and two horns, and his face, I can visualize Yamantaka. But not in details, but I visualize the whole image. That's fine, too. Many is also one. If you can't do that, then just visualize his kapala, one of his arm holding the carved knife and the other hand holding the skull cup. That's fine too. One is the same as many and many is equivalent to one. So visualization in Tantrayana has no problem. That's my reply to Silian Jin from Indonesia. So, like Kala Chakra has 24 arms, 24 hands, and each of the hands hold a Dharma implement. And you, if you want to visualize them one by one, then the Homa fire would be extinguished. Then what kind of Homa would that be? This is also a key point. It depends how much time you have, then that's how much you visualize. You just do your best. Xiaoming woke up in the morning and discovered that he was lying in the hospital and all pains and sores all over the body and the face was swollen like a bread. And then he remembered he had a dinner with a colleague the night before. So he called the colleague Xiao Hua. So what's going on now? And Xiao Hua said, Last night, I saw you really drunk and became unconscious. So I took you to rest in the hotel. And I called your wife to ask her to come take care of you. And your wife came as soon as the door was open, and because you were really drunk, and then you shouted at your own wife, give me a young one. Then he became hospitalized. Today, 
today I went to the hospital for a medical checkup and the doctor took the report and told me, good thing you came in early. It was like a th thunder strike and my heart stopped uh, wondering what happened and the doctor said, if you came a little bit later, then I would have taken off. My explanation on Vimalakirti Sutra is not necessary like the explanations of other people. My explanation is rather different. So now Vimalakirti replied, you asked earlier why there are no attendants here. Because Manjushri Bodhisattva asked, your room is empty, how come? There's no attendant at all, not even one. And Vimala Kirti replied, the question you ask, why there are no attendants, that's because all the myriad demons and heretic followers are my attendants. Vimala Kirti replied that all the demons or Maras and heretic followers are my attendants. How do you explain this? Why is this so? This is the sutra text. All demons delight in births and deaths, but the Bodhisattva do not relinquish births and death. So all the Maras delight in births and deaths. So all the demons uh, delight in births and deaths, the same with humans. That's why I often say, what is to be joyful about births and what is to be sorrowful about deaths. When, when one is being born, what is there to be joyful about? And one dies, what is there to be sorrowful about? Only one who has seen through can say that. So demons and ordinary people uh, delight in births and death, but the Bodhisattva do not relinquish birth and death because birth is death and death is birth. You come to samsara, if you're born, you're born. If you die, you die. You take it very lightly. The same as the non-existent, no births and no deaths. How come there's no birth and no death? Because originally it's all empty anyway. That's why a statement in Zen Buddhism, uh, 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 before I was born, who am I? Who was I? After being born, who am I? Before I was born, who was I? And before
before I was born, I was the tr true emptiness. After being born, who am I? I am the causes and conditions emptiness. I am empty by causes and conditions. So, demons delight in birth and death, but the bodhisattvas do not uh, uh, do not regard birth and death as big deal. So seemingly coming and seemingly going, and the same uh, with the heretic followers. They delight in various views, but the bodhisattvas remain unperturbed amidst all those views. So, for bodhisattvas, they are all empty. So, that's unborn endurance. The heart and the mind is, uh, are unmoved. Doesn't matter what they see, they stay unperturbed, unmoved. This is the key point. One time, Milarepa returned to his cave where he was cultivating. There was a Mara, or demon, inside it. And then he applied all kind of ways to, uh, to chase him away. But the Mara stayed. And then, finally, Milarepa understood that uh, the, even the Mara is also empty by causes and condition. So he walked in, and then the Mara disappeared by itself, because the Mara, too, is empty. So Manjushri Bodhisattva said that I have no attendance. How come I have no attendance? All these maras, all these causes and conditions, emptiness are around me. All the heretic followers are around me. Because Vimalakirti is delivering sentient beings, so everyone around him, all the people around him are his attendants. All the maras, demons, uh, heretic followers are his attendants. That's why I say that the Mara, or demon, is my spiritual companion. Is there a great uh, sadaka or spiritual cultivator without a demon by his side? Every great spiritual cultivator would have Mara by their side. So we, the spiritual cultivators, treat Mara as our companions, as our spiritual friends, companions. That's my Dharma teaching. So Vimalakirti too was incredible. Manjushri Bodhisattva asks again, it's not that he did not understand, but in this dialogue, then it would uh, allow many sentient beings to gain enlightenment. So Manjushri asks again, Master, what is the phenomena of your illness? Vimalakirti is the great uh, lay Buddhist master, and you uh, you become ill, but illness has no form. But sometimes you have symptoms on you. You look look ill. Uh, becoming skinny, or fever, or pain. 
nausea, and you lose appetite when you have fever. Oh, when you're nauseous, you can't eat, or pains that's suffering too. So, how is your illness? Do you have fever? Do you sneeze? Do you have running nose? Is there pain anywhere? Manjushri asked, and Vimala Kirti replied, My illness is formless and invisible. My illness is formless, has no form. You can't see it. And Manjushri asked again, is your illness of the body or the mind? Is your illness of the body or the mind? Is it your body that's ill or is it your mentally or emotionally ill. Vimalakirti replied, it is not of the body because the body is an aggregate of the four elements, earth, water, fire and wind. It is fundamentally empty, so it is not an illness of the body. And it is also not the illness of the mind or the heart because the heart mind is intangible. So the heart mind is formless. It is originally, is fundamentally empty. Therefore, the illness is not of the body nor of the mind. Himalakirti replied, there are many mental or emotional illness. Ordinary beings have many of those diseases, like OCD, depression. They are all mental illness, paranoia. Afraid actually is nothing. But why are you so afraid? Uh, and it's a paranoia of being harmed. Always think that someone's being harmed you. When there's a plane in the sky, you would think that the government is uh, surveying you. So are you that great? The plane is patrolling and checking on me. And this person is harming me, that person is harming me, and trying to harm me. And you're not even Grandma Stilu. But there may be some people who want to harm Grandma Stilu. And you're not even that famous and you're not that rich, why would people harm you? Unless it's, uh, it's uh, coincidentally you encounter a murderer. Uh, a murderer who just wants to kill. That's also a mental illness. And there's so many uh, gun shooting and in America. That's those are sick people. That's mental illness. Like the ex uh, Prime Minister of Japan, Abe, he did not know that person. It's just that he was closer to the religious leader and that person was a follower of the religious 
religion. And he did not kill the religious figure, but to kill the uh, ex-prime minister, Abe. So he seemed unrelated to Abe. So, and then he killed. So he's uh, uh, expressing his anger at somebody else. So that's a kind of mental illness. And because Abi is more famous, and he was killed, it's such a pity, because from his face, I can tell that he is a, a good and kind person. What a pity. Some people are not afraid of death. A disciple from Vancouver came to find me, and she said that her friend, or his friend, was one of the 10 best accountants, and she applied for Uranasia on December 12th, because she was in a car accident and injured uh, the spine. And afterward, uh, he had a, she had the surgery, and uh, and did not uh, recover. So she had extreme headache, could not sleep at night, and pain all over the body, and suffer greatly. Has been suffering greatly and also ringing in the ears very loud. It's very difficult to cure ringing in the ears, so very loud and disturb her so that she couldn't sleep. Severe headache, pains, ringing in the ears, could not sleep, so she'd rather die than live. So she applied for euthanasia in Canada. I did not know that euthanasia is allowed in Canada. It is very easy to apply for one. If I knew that, I should have immigrated to Canada. Now the application for euthanasia in Canada have, has increased greatly. Everybody wants to die. So Canadians are great. Most people are afraid to die. Even if they live with suffering, they'd rather live. They don't want to die. But Canadians are so brave. They apply to die with euthanasia because they could not live on. And illnesses really cause great suffering. A beautiful accountant could not sleep at night. And she will... Uh, take uh, go through the euthanasia on December 12th. And her friend is a Tribuda school disciple and came to find me and ask for help and wish that the Golden Mother could help her. And I drew several talismans and I hoped that it would they would help her, but uh, otherwise she would be she would die on December 12th by taking the euthanasia. But some people, their lives are worse than deaths, especially in old age, with uh, old age and illnesses, and they are hopeless. If I knew that, why? I should have immigrated to Canada instead of America. It's very easy to apply in Canada. 
Are you Canadian? <laughs> You're very fortunate. But Lian Wen has good health, always smiling and happily living. We know, simply said, what is what is uh, joyful about living, what is sorrowful being dead. Life and death are the same. Life and death are the same as nirvana. Vimalakirti do, does not regard life and death as big deal. But humans do, but I don't either. So we place birth and death uh, out there, uh, so there are no births and no deaths. No big deal. Uh, it's nothing to me, birth and death are nothing. So, what is joyful about life or birth, and what is sorrowful about death? Being born should be sorrowful, and dying should be joyful. There is no grasping toward them, no attachment to them. So, Vimalakirti said, it's not the problem of the body because it's an aggregate of the four elements and it's not of the mind because the mind is illusory. So, and Manjushri Bodhisattva asks again, of the four elements of earth, water, fire, and wind, which element is your illness due to? Because these elements are not harmonized, that's why you're ill. So, of the four elements, which element is your illness due to? If it's due to earth, if there's more earth, then you would have pains in your bones or muscles and problems with too much water, that's blood, like you get leukemia, those are problems due to water, or you have anemia, etc. And then illnesses due to fire or too much fire. <laughs> that means you have rising temper. Uh, you have fiery temper. <laughs> There's a restaurant in Taichung that's called Fochita. It's in the Mediterranean. Fochita means a fork. I think it's Italian, for Chita restaurant, and it's a pun of a Chinese word uh, meaning ri rising temper. Wu Chai Dan. Yeah, it's a menuless meal, so whatever meals, but it will never be repeated uh, on each of your visits. That restaurant is extremely expensive, and we've been there several times. Hochita. <laughs> is it delicious? Yes. Tiny little bit of things, and very different from others. I heard there's one in Taipei and one in Taichung. <laughs> Sure, but you pay for it. She asked uh, Grandmaster to take us there. Manjushri Bodhisattva asked, 
of the four elements, which element is your illness due to? An illness due to too much wind? What things is moving is your qi, your subtle vital energy. You can lift up your arm because your mind moves your qi to lift up your arm. If you cannot lift up your arm, then that means illness due to too much wind or to the wind. And illness due to fire has to do with temperature, like fever, cold, feeling cold. So which element is your illness? Vimakiti replied, my illness is not due to the four elements, but also not apart from them. It's an illness that's not an illness. <laughs> Vimalakiti replied, it's not due to earth, but it is also due to earth. It's not, uh, it's not due to water, but it is. And it's not due to fire, but it is. And also to wind. So this answer is incredible because it's very complete, so that uh, you can pick on it. Because the four elements are fundamentally empty, and that's real emptiness. If you disintegrate into earth, water, fire, and wind, they're all empty too. So everything is, and everything is not too. So Vimalakirti's reply was incredible. The illnesses of sentient beings arise from these elements because they are ill, therefore I am ill. Because sentient beings are ill, that's why I am ill. This statement was spoken by Bodhisattvas and by Vimalakirti. This is the key point. Because sentient beings are ill, therefore I am ill. When sentient beings are not ill, then I won't be ill. Because when sentient beings are not ill, when sentient beings are not ill, that means they have been delivered completely. Then there's no need to come to Saha, Saha world. The Bodhisattvas come to the Saha world because sentient beings are ill. So as soon as Vimalakirti came to the Saha world, he has a physical body and therefore he can be sick. But the sickness too is also empty. So Vimalakirti came to the Saha world to deliver sentient beings is because of the illnesses of sentient beings. And be when sentient beings have no illnesses, then he doesn't have to come to the Sahawal, then of course he will not be ill. Uh, because sentient beings are attached to their illnesses, but bodhisattvas will not be attached to their illnesses. That's the only difference. Because sentient beings are deluded and bodhisattvas are enlightened. Enlightened, then you are bodhisattvas. Deluded, you are sentient beings. Because he has gained enlightenment, he came to the Saha world not for the sufferings of sentient beings to deliver sentient beings. He come to deliver sentient beings because sentient beings are ill. And because sentient beings are ill, of course I have Ill illness. I am not for the illness, but sentient beings are for the illness. So Vimalakirti does not think the suffering of illness is suffering. Only then he is a great bodhisattva. 
He came for the sake of sentient beings. Because sentient beings are deluded, He came to the Saha world to deliver sentient beings. Actually, everything is emptiness. Romantic love, frankly speaking, that's also delusion. What is love? Let me ask you, what is love that will make you uh, a follow in life and death? That's delusion and uh, attachment. Actually, it's empty. One day, in old age, both are old, but love is still there. <laughs> With one kiss, the teeth fall off. That's the scariest thing. When you kiss a little bit too strong, and then you got the teeth of the old lady into your mouth, the denture. And one time, kissing an old lady who's sick, oh, and she cough a phlegm. And then you were kissing her and swallowed the phlegm. That's really scary. Yuck. So young people can play around, but old people uh, should be conscientious. Uh, should should know that they're not young anymore. Actually, love is also empty, really. Like those uh, great love are all tragedies. The butterfly uh, stories or couples. Niang Xiang Po and Zhu Tai, Romeo and Juliet are all tragedies. That's why it, they become classics. The prince and the princess have everly, uh, happily ever married, uh, live happily ever after. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a fairy tale. That's a fairy tale. That the prince and the princess got married and live happily ever after at most a few years and then you would know in the future. Just take it easy. Just take it lightly about those things. No big deal. You don't even care about life and death. So let alone love with an illness, you would all your desires would uh, disappear. You have no more energy. Uh, how can you date? That's fake. Uh, you fake to be happy and to smile, but actually you're suffering. That's meaningless, right? Because you're suffering in illness, and you can't even laugh, so so you look even worse when you try to smile, when you suffer in illness. So beauties don't last a few years, and. <laughs> Even sweetness will not be very long. Right, Reverend Lili? The sweetness only lasts momentarily. You were dating 
several times in your life, but did you ever succeed? You're still you're all alone until now. Reverend Lily was very beautiful when she was young and three men. <laughs> went to her house to mow the, her lawn. And when Reverend Lily uh, opened the window, those three men just uh, did all they could. That's all about, that's all, that's it. They're all gone now. And Mr. Xu, who wanted to give you a house, a car, and money to let her marry him, and I told her, go ahead. She was very beautiful then. <laughs> but now... And then she became a nun. <laughs> because she had no 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 hope. So, because sentient beings are ill, that's why Vimalakirti was ill. If you see through human life, everything is empty. After, after marriage, I've never uh, seen my wife's uh, cell phone. And today, accidentally, I saw her phone. And I saw the, the uh, phone, phone call records. <laughs> and the context, and there was one that's called the jerk, that has many uh, uh, calls, records, <laughs> what do you call it? And the husband was very angry and called the number, <laughs> and that's his number, his phone. <laughs> It turned out that she's called the husband jerk. That's love. Okay, let me tell the last joke. And the lady took the man to uh, go home and meet her parents. And she told the dad, this is my boyfriend. And the dad said, Hey, kid, I speak very straightforwardly. Please don't mind. You're so ugly. Where do you have any... Where did you get self-confidence to marry my girl, my daughter? And the boyfriend said, But uncle, you're even uglier than I am. And yet you married the beautiful and upright, uh, gentle and kind and considerate and a beautiful wife. And she's a goddess, a uh, 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 gorgeous woman. And then, and then uh, the boy, I mean the boyfriend, asked the mom, "Was I right?" And mom said, "Why, why did you call me auntie? You should call me mom." So the mother of the girlfriend told the boyfriend, so have dinner with us, stay. Uh, I will go grocery shopping 
and invite you for dinner. So, do you know? <laughs> Sweet talks are very important. Oh, money, Benny, home. Oh, money, Benny, home.